Well, we got quite a storm going, and we're kind of surrounded by fir trees, big, tall fir trees, and they're blowing pretty hard. These on this side, they're really blowing. But I came out here to uh, cut a piece off of a cherry log that I have. I stopped to show you those trees. I'm going to take that over where I cut my wood and get a slice of it off. It's very wet, freshly cut. But we're going to make a quick turning from a piece of green cherry. So I'll meet you in the shop and we'll get going on this. I've got a piece of green cherry and I'll tell you what, it is heavy. It's got to be just soaking wet. It's about eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter and it's about four and three quarters this way. I want to turn this now because I've just glued up another segment turning and I want to let that sit at least the rest of the day until tomorrow. Hopefully I can rough this out and get it down to size and find out if cherry will dry without cracking when it's down semi-thin. So I've got a hole in it for a worm screw. Let me get it mounted up and we'll start turning it. That looks pretty even. I'm not going to cut the corners off. It's not really that big. This will be quick and easy. All right, I'm going to start with a 5 8 bowl gouge and just rough this out. That's actually pretty good balance there. I'm going to start at uh, 620 RPM. It's definitely wet and it's another reason I wanted to do it today because the weather is starting to change around here. It's halfway warm right now. And I need to work on this area here. So we can figure out what we're going to have for a base and what kind of shape we're going to have. Switch to a half inch. Well, that's about it, and I think I'll try to uh, pour some CA down 
going in that crack. So I have it flipped around and I went ahead and flattened that rough edge and now we'll see if we can get it hollowed out. And hope it doesn't crack. Looks like going about 850 RPM, and uh, I've switched to a half inch bowl gouge for this. A pretty good three eighths here. That might be a little bit thick, but not sure. So I've got this pretty smooth right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down a little bit farther and then clean that area. This is kind of an experiment. Uh, I'm going to wet sand this using mineral oil because the wood has so much water in it. If I just use paper without it, it's going to clog up instantly. May work, may not. This whole thing has been an experiment. I'm using 80 grit. And I don't want to gum up my little disc. So I'll do it like this. It's, it's taking stuff off. towel to it to see what it looks like. I would say it looks pretty reasonable. Reasonably good. Alright, I'll do a uh, I'll do this for a while and I'll come back for the next step. Okay, so after sanding this with a mineral oil and 80 grit, I let it sit for two and a half days or so while I finished up my segment turning. And wow, look at the colors in this. And it did warp a little bit this way and it has a kind of a rooftop which I don't really like. You know, it's like half of that. So I would just as soon flatten this out and I think it'll really be a pretty bowl. And it measures about 11% on the base so I think it's I think it's pretty dry for around here. And if you could hear the rain that we just had, 
this is really dry compared to that rain. It was, it was a monsoon coming down. All right, let me get the tool rest up here and we'll see if I can flatten that. The walls are real consistent, so it's not going to change the look. You can see the wobble. And it's, it is this way as well, but I won't be turning any of that. I just want to see if I can face this off. Sounds flat. And I think I've got a cut all the way around it. And I think it's going to look pretty cool. Alright, so after I finished flattening this face, I went over it with denatured alcohol. And I had to let it sit all night because it was getting kind of late. I'm going to re-sand everything with 80 grit and work my way up to probably 400. And then we'll get a finish on it. And hopefully it sands really nice now. The mineral oil and the 80 grit actually really helped to sand that wet wood. If you just sanded wet wood with uh, the way it was, you just don't get very far. But for some reason the mineral oil really helps the sanding process. So let's see what it looks like. Going in reverse and probably about 300 because of the wobble. But I can still keep the paper against it. I'm getting some pretty nice dust on it now. Alright, I think that's going to be good. I will uh, get the outside and the inside all sanded up to about 400 and I'll come back and we'll be ready to put the final finish on it. Or actually just put a finish on it. Okay. That, uh, that looks pretty good. I think that's going to sand nice. And it's, it's pretty dry. Okay. Okay, I have got it sanded to 400 on the outside and the inside. And it feels very dry. So I'm going to go ahead and I committed myself to using this butcher block finish because I want to test it out. This wood is so nice, I'm really tempted to use shellac on it. But I do have some more of this, and that's probably what I'll do. But I, even though it's not big enough for me, I would like to think of it as a nice little popcorn bowl. See if we can bring those colors back, and pretty much. I don't know that they recommend the conditioner as the first thing to put down on it, but uh, that's what I'm going to do because I don't really follow every recommendation. Whatever works good is kind of what I like to use. I think it's pretty. Let me take it off and we'll do the inside while we're at it. This is not like using a lacquer or shellac. You can touch this. It's not going to affect anything. So I still have a tenon on there, but I think we can still do this. We'll get some better views of this once I get it off the tenon. Alright, let's go ahead and remove this tenon. Okay, it is all done. 
Make sure you stick around to the end. I have a special surprise for all of my subscribers. I use mineral oil on this for two reasons. One for the sanding because the mineral oil helps carry the sanding dust away and keeps it out of the grit of the sandpaper a lot better than just sanding wet wood and it worked quite well. The other thing is I left the oil in the wood while it was drying because cherry cracks fairly easy and I thought if I had to oil in there it would slow it down. Well after just two days in my drying box it was dry and no cracks so I'm pretty happy with that. It finished six and a half inches in diameter, it's three and a half tall and the walls vary between three sixteenths and a quarter because it did warp. And there's the base there. It is very pretty wood too. And that finish really helped. I used the Howard Butcher Block conditioner on it. And uh, it really enhances the beauty of that cherry. Some people like to do a twice turn bowl where you leave the walls thick and let them dry. And I don't like waiting two months for something to dry. I just like to turn it thin and get it done. So you're wondering what my surprise is. Well, I'm going to have a subscriber appreciation giveaway coming up. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. Because you also will be able to enter the drawing for next week's turning. And it's not going to be this. It's going to be pretty cool. At least I think it's pretty cool. So that's about it. Uh, see you next week, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment. I read them all, and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex, so let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.